Yes, well, guess what? It's Friday yet again on Gay Detroit Radio. Yes, welcome to www.radio-op.com. We have got so much to talk about this week. So much to talk about. And uh, let's see, we're going to start off with a little bit of fun this week. And uh, we're going to have like some... Um, Let's see, what have we got? We've got like steamy man on man sex is the cause of the California's mega drought. Mm-hmm. And then obviously this is a good thing too. Women are now watching more gay and lesbian porn than men are. And a Swedish group trolls the Russian Navy with flashing gay signs. Now, these are the good things that are going to happen on Gay Detroit Radio this week. But let's have some music. And uh, this is the wonderful sound by Nikki Holland and Secret. Uh, Watch me in the corners. Corners of your eyes You're dancing here, that's why I came I strip you naked In these pictures in my mind My needs, my wants are hard to tame Now I wanna run to you Pick you up between your thighs Just to hear you gasp And speak my name Why do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back to hold on you Lock me inside Just to hear you As your hips beneath me rise Let's dance a way you've never seen I want to creep in you Open the depth of you inside Surrounded by the musk of you and me You saturate me With the pleasure in your cries And I won't let go until you scream Why do we run? Why do we hide? Why must I be your secret? You come back to With all the lies If you'll say that later We can meet And I'll keep your secret From the public's scornful eyes If that's what it takes to get relief Just know that one day I'll lay it out to your surprise I don't really care It's what you Receive Why Do we run Why Do we hide Why Must I be Your secret You come back to Hold on you Lock me inside When your eyes Your nose Your legs Your head Your legs, your hair, until your face, your nails, and then you 
Yeah, I really do like that young girl, uh, the lovely Nikki Holland there. Well, as promised. <laughs> oh, we've got some silly stories this week. Now, apparently, um, the California drought, uh, the mega drought, um, which also is the... Uh, a lot of conflict of interest with uh, Nestle, uh, who's taking all the water from California while there's a drought and charging lots and lots of money. Uh, but apparently, um, gays are also responsible for the drought in good old California. Yes, that man-on-man -man steamy sex is causing the drought. Uh, gays are responsible for pretty much all of the natural disasters currently facing a beautiful Christian nation. That is according to um, an amateur weatherman and Christian radio broadcaster, Rick Wiles. Or is that Prick Wiles? Mm, no, can't be gay because he's too small, especially the prick. Um... Also happens to specialize in the end of times prediction. And obviously, he's like Pat Robertson, who said he was going to die of cancer unless you sent millions and millions of dollars and the old bastard's still alive. So, yes, apparently us gays are now really responsible for the good old California drought. I'm just wondering, you know, I mean, if we're that powerful and gays are that powerful and causing all the tsunamis and um, the... You know, the the earthquakes, uh, the plagues of locusts, um, the diseases that befall everybody in the earth. Um, why God hasn't stepped in? Because if God didn't want us around, why is he making so many of us? And also, why are all these people saying that, you know, gays can't adopt children? Because if you have two gay parents, obviously the child is going to be gay. Well, my parents were straight. And I turned out gay, so there's something wrong with their reasoning. And here's another little fun fact as well. Apparently, women, yes, are what, and this is straight women, by the way, are happy hetero ladies, are now actually watching more gay and lesbian porn. Women around the world love to watch gay sex, even more than men. Um, Pornhub, the world's largest pornography site, has revealed uh, data about what kind of adult content to its 44 million visitors a day. 44 million people. <laughs> Jesus. I'm in the wrong job. Good God. Oh, 44 million visitors. 44 million people a day are watching porn. A lot of them are also in the Bible Belt. You know, where all the redneck states are, you know, and um, all the red states, I should say. Not redneck states, I do apologize. All the red states, which actually have like 95% um, um, Social Security and, uh, you know, all food stamps. You know, where all the Republicans like to boast that they've got the best states in the whole world. Well, apparently all these people as well are doing nothing but watch porn. And the women are watching the female, females, the females are watching all the gay porn. And, uh, yeah, that's good. All right. These good old Christian women beating it off with the Bible. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm going to burn like tissue. Trust me. All right. <laughs> Dear, I can't read the Bible. I'm shaking too fast. Okay, so. <laughs> and the last part of this section is a Swedish peace group has come up with a novel way of deterring suspected Russian submarines from the waters around Stockholm and offshore flagships. And they're doing a flashing neon gay sailor sign to wash, you know, sort of worn off and Worn away these nasty, nasty little rusky people who are so anti-gay. <laughs> so, and it's an neon sign. <laughs> it's flashing away. And it's the singing sailor. Okay. <laughs> this is too, way too much for a white man. <laughs> 
dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think I'm going to actually I'm gonna have a friend of mine sing a song now. Oh, good God. I'm going to have Xander sing a song. And actually, this is perfect for that section anyway. It's called um, Bathtub Gin. Welcome, Xander, to the show. <laughs> Let's get those singing sailors and water off those damn huskies and ruskies with my little tidy whitey yeah <laughs> local man a little very very handsome talented young man they called Xander and bathtub gin which actually really was very appropriate for the first section um now actually something rather do you know what is going on with Michigan I mean what is going on with um, prick Snyder and uh, shitty shooty because I really honestly don't know I mean there's a Michigan bill that is aiming to wipe out the local LGBT anti-discrimination laws um, the Michigan House of Representatives is considering a bill that will bar local governments from um, excuse me, enacting worker protections that are stronger than the state or federal laws on its books. In other words, they don't want to obey the law. They're trying to get a law so they don't have to obey the law. This is really ridiculous. Anyway, this means that the... Uh, means no higher uh, minimum wage, uh, no better sick leave policy, and no anti-discrimination protections for lesbians, gays, bisexuals, and transgender workers. Um, this is uh, the bill is proposed by uh, State Rep. L. Uh, Poleski, Republican. Yay! Those lovely Republicans, Let's keep the poor bastards down, does not explicitly address the LGBT rights, but uh, the potential impact of House Bill seems clear. Um, these are like 22 states now uh, with laws that are banning discrimination against LGBT, um, you know, uh, people individuals or whatever it's just i just think it's just completely completely ridiculously you're being total assholes um you know you're not being politicians anymore you're just being total pricks simple as that um why on earth you cannot follow the rest of the world uh, well the rest or let's just say the rest of america because you're being outvoted now you're on the wrong side of history why you're holding out like nasty temperamental little teenagers with tantrums i do not know 
Well, sorry, you can't have your ball back. Fuck off, buy a new one, and start obeying the law like everybody else. There, I said it. Also, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Fisher. Yes, you know him from the bloody, um, oh, God, Brian Fisher. Now, do you know what? They, do you know, actually, I just found something out. Do you know, do you know Fisher's? They're actually supposed to be tears, you know, tears in the rectum. So if you've got a tear in your rectum, it's called a fissure. Just a point. I just thought I'd let you know. Anyway, so this little tear in your rectum called Brian Fisher has been a real pain in the ass because uh, on his radio program today, Brian Fisher called for gay people to be banned from working from the Transportation Security Administration. Uh, on the grounds that gay security screeners at airports are repeatedly sexually assaulting passengers. And, of course, there's been no complaints whatsoever about the heterosexuals doing this any time whatsoever. (laughs) Please, uh, citing literally four examples... Uh, Fisher declared that the incidents of passengers being sexually groped by TSA agents of the same sex are being reported almost every day. Uh, For examples, is not almost every day. It's not like the heterosexuals are like almost every minute. Jeez, what is up with these people? And this is one of my favorites. An anti-gay Missouri GOP House Speaker has been caught sexting with an intern. Yes, in Kansas City, yes, click those little red pumps three times because you're not going home, you little tart. Yes, the Kansas City... Star reported that the Speaker of the Missouri House, Republican John Dale, I think that's it, Dale, 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 whatever, uh, sent several sexually charged text messages to a female college freshman who was working as an intern in the state legislature. He's also a married man and has championed religious rights and to gay agenda in the state house, no less. And has in turn been passed by the state's conservative groups for his, oh sorry, praised for his moral leadership. Moral leadership, my ass. We're back to another fisher by the looks of it. Do you know, I am so fed up of these people. These, you know, high moralistic on their high horses and they've virtually got something right up their ass and it's usually either another man or another woman. Really, really fed up. Really, really. I mean, we're just sick of you. Sick, 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 sick. Let's have some music. And this is for our uh, metal, our gay metal people out there because we like every kind of music. And... um, this is uh, from Sunday Hats, and it's called Let's... Oh, yes, especially for our intern and uh, for Mr. Fisher, pain in the ass, or rip in the ass. Let's play Doctor. Yay. Yeah. Just like a virus, baby. 
Yes, a little sound there from our little metal friends there. And uh, I actually, I really do like that as it happens. As Sunday Hats and Let's Play Doctor. I like the title even better, actually. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about something that's really... This is rather disturbing, mainly because um, there's all this news about all the police and... Uh, all the violence with the police and what's happening to people that are victims of the police. But there's many other things that people are not actually looking at and the media is not covering because it's just really not that newsworthy. And uh, there's a great big um, New Orleans uh, billboard and it actually makes 400,000 people aware of the transphobic violence daily. And uh, the New Orleans LGBT Youth of Color activist group Breakout has one simple question. Where is the national outcry over the murders of trans women of color? You're all saying that Black Lives Matter. But what about these 12 transgendered women who've been murdered already this year? Just this year in 2015. If black, ma black lives do matter, where is the outrage and the outcry for these 10 women who have been murdered? Once again, all lives matter. And if black lives do matter that much, why are these lives being ignored? I think it's disgusting. It's about time we really got our priorities in order. You know, stop the bullying. And to stop the police bullying as well, because the police really now, um, I'm sorry, but it's just getting out of hand. Um, this has been going on for a long time, decades and decades, but now because of people having handheld cameras in their phones and everything, a lot more now is coming out in the open and people are saying, no, this has got to stop. It's not saying that all the police forces are the same. It's just like the one bad apple. You know, it's the minority that's giving the majority a bad name. But, you know, where is people like the wonderful Al Sharpton? Where is he when police are getting murdered? Where is he when these 12 transgendered women, just 12 in New Orleans in 2015, just this year, sorry, 10 women, where is he then? Where is he? But then again, it's not newsworthy enough, is it? Also, another thing as well. I'm just going to carry this on and then we'll we'll move on. But this is really disgusting as well. A 12-year-old girl, 12-year-old 12 girl, bullied for her bisexuality, commits suicide. A 12-year-old girl, bullied for being bisexual, has committed suicide. Alyssa Morgan from Des Moines, Iowa, hung herself in her family's garage on the 3rd of April. She was uh, the mother who found her daughter, is going to have that image for the rest of her life. In the three weeks that were leading up to her death, Alyssa had been out of the school bus. Uh, this is a 12-year-old girl. Now, I'm sorry, but parents out there, it's time you started protecting your children, and it's time you started making people who are looking after your children responsible for their lives too. Teachers out there, Schools out there, colleges out there, they are responsible for looking after your children. It's about time now they were held responsible. And it's not just only their job, parents out there, it's your job too. Stop looking the other way. Stop living in denial. Your child is in trouble. It's about time you took your own responsibility and started to protect your children. Because this is what's happening. They're killing themselves. And you're just completely ignoring it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm James D. You're listening to Gay Detroit Radio. Let's have some music. This is called Pidiendo Mas. Go, 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 go! Hey, I'm in Canada.
nice little bit of Espanol there, um, pidiendo más. I do like that actually. Um, they actually, they actually, it's ebony voice, and they actually are from Spain, and they sent me that. So please, please, please play it, and I really do like it. Now we're back to Michigan again. I really don't know what's going on, but um, there's a sign, and um, it's a billboard, and it's carrying the controversial marriage. And Faith to Action, Americans for Truth About Homosexuality, the Judicial Action Group, the American Family Association. What they're doing is they're putting a sign that's going born Asian, born black, born white, whatever. And then going and um, not born this way with a person. And it's got the color of the rainbow. And it's going, homosexuality is a behavior, not a civil right. This is from uh, the site, it's, um, it's oh, something, judicial.com. Uh, and uh, what it's saying is it's wanting to actually, it's a begging letter, actually. It's restrainthejudges.com. And it's a begging letter. And for like nine ninety nine, you can get like um, a restraining order. Uh, for twenty nine ninety nine, then you get restraining order plus a letter, and then for like thirty nine or forty nine ninety nine, you then get more letters, and then it sends more restraining orders, and then it's saying that you've got like three hundred thousand, um, you know, restraining orders already, which is bullshit, absolute bullshit. It's a begging letter for money, and if I'm going to send a begging letter for money, I'm going to want Tony Perkins to give me a blowjob for four ninety nine before I'd get a restraining order, and he'll have to take his teeth out. This is totally ridiculous. Um, we are not homosexuality is not a behaviour. Hatred is a behaviour, not a Christian right. This is just too much. You got to stop this. They are, they're saying, you know, all the Christians are now being persecuted, you know, and it's bullshit. You know, the, the, the Christians are leaving the churches in droves because they're fed up of the Christian right and the Christian conservatives pummeling everything down, everything down their throat. You've got Mike Fuckerby. What an asshole. This is just total ridiculousness. You know, this man is so Christian and his morals are so good, but yet his son was actually arrested for torturing and hanging a dog and killing the dog in a tree. That's his own son. He got those charges squashed. So where is Mike Fuckerby's bloody morals now? Please. So homosexuality is not a behavior. Hatred is a behavior, not a Christian right. The Bible is supposed to be a spiritual guide. Not a self-righteous rule book of terror and hatred. Please, if you're going to start reading the Bible, read it properly. We're fed up of your shit. Simple as that. There, I said it. Okay, Texas, Texas now is just unbelievable. It's trying to get everything thrown in the name of Christianity. Now it's saying that um, Texas... Uh, has now okayed a bill allowing uh, clergy uh, to refuse same-sex marriages. Fine. We don't need clergy to perform marriages. We don't need anybody of any religious faith or denomination to perform a marriage. A marriage is a contract, a legal contract. It is nothing to do with a church whatsoever. Once again, let's go back into the days of Leviticus. Uh, in those days, the traditional form of marriage was when a woman was traded for land, animals, and possibly a plucked chicken, and her contract was her virginity. Whereas she traded her virginity for a life of cooking, opening her legs and bearing children for men, and she was a total slave. That was uh, the traditional form of marriage. Since then, the women have now had the nerve to actually go out and vote. So all you Christian right people, everything you say now is null and void because women now have the vote and they can decide what they want to do. They're no longer slaves. That was the traditional form of marriage. So please, 
we don't want to hear any more of that either. So we don't need um, clergy or anybody who has only got any religious denominations to perform any same-sex marriages whatsoever. You are not needed. You are now null and void because it's a legal contract. Now, a holy matrimony and a wedding is ancillary to the law. That means it is there and it's a blessing. Christianity is supposed to be a blessing, not a retardation of a day. Moving on. Now, believe it or not, the U.S. now is ranking the worst in sports homophobia of all the English-speaking countries. Did you know that? Though many sports fans in the U.S. are used to chanting, we are the number one. Well, we can't quite make that claim when it comes to homophobia. Unless it's number one meaning anti-gay offenders in the English-speaking word. Yes, then, we're number one. Homophobia is the biggest, biggest thing now in America. Unfortunately, it's actually now going under, since the Hobby Lobby ruling uh, with SCOTUS, uh, the Religious Freedom Act, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's all again saying, oh, well, they're trying to, you know, sort of rule it in where, you know, it's it's like gay rights and abortion. They're, 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 now, listen, one has nothing to do with the other. One is an orientation. The other one is a choice. And unfortunately, a lot of people out there are only pro-life until the child starts breathing then they don't care anymore once the child starts breathing or needing food then it's off their list they don't want to know about it there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of starving abandoned children out there where are their rights but that has nothing to do with homosexuality abortion is a choice homosexuality isn't and the only reason a lot of people are pro-life is because they, soon as they have to actually listen to it breathing or crying or they have to feed it, they don't want anything else to do with it. So please, get your facts right. You're not pro-life. If you were pro-life, you wouldn't kill the doctors. If you were pro-life, you wouldn't attack and be discriminatory and ha full of hatred and full of bigotry. That is not pro-life. Once again, abortion is a choice. But then again, there's also the part of rape as well. I don't want to get into this subject, but you cannot actually link both of them together because homosexuality and abortion are completely different subjects altogether. Let's have some music. I know what. Let's have a nice little sort of uh, soothing tone for a change. Here's a little bit of uh, The Streets of Detroit by uh, a very talented young man called James D. Hmm, I wonder who he is. <laughs>
Actually, originally called Streets of London, uh, but before that, sorry, I do apologize, they're called the Streets of Paris. Then it was uh, recorded uh, a while ago by a guy called Ralph McTell, and it was called the Streets of London. And I decided, since I moved here, I might as well do a Streets of Detroit version. So there you are. Now, let's see what we got in the old stinking pot of politics. This is some good news. That's it. Good news on this section. Uh, Luxembourg, the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, um, is now set to marry his um, same-sex marriage. In fact, is marrying his same-sex partner or has married his same-sex partner today. Yes, Luxembourg's gay Prime Minister has married um, his boyfriend, partner. What do you call him now? I, do you know, it's just like, I can never get to the point. People say, well, you know, he's your husband. Well, technically, yes. Um, he's not my partner anymore, but I prefer the term spouse. Um, you know, people say, oh, he's my husband, or he's my husband, or he's my husband. But I prefer spouse. Um, it sounds a lot more sophisticated, a lot more... I don't know. I just like the word spouse. Um, you know, uh, husband and wife, fine. But it's just, um, I prefer it that way. That's just mine. Anyway, the small European country, which has a population of just 550,000 people, and it's the only country in the world to have a gay prime minister. And uh, he's actually, um, <clears throat> excuse me, marrying uh, his openly... Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, Etienne, Xavier and Etienne. Oh, beautiful names. Sweet, 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 sweet. Now, Dan Savage. Well, a lot of us know old Dan Savage out there. And uh, I like Dan because he virtually turns around and says, you know, I'm gay. Fuck off. Deal with it. If you've got a problem, come and see me. And uh, <laughs> there's a lot of controversy with him. And good for him, because you know what? He opens his mouth and says exactly what it is. You know, suck my dick was to one comment, um, which we're not going to say which one that was. Earlier this year, we told you about uh, Dan Savage's pilot being 
attacked by the conservatives who didn't want his comedy about a gay teen even to see the light of day. Well, they lost. ABC has now officially picked up the Savage sitcom titled The Real O'Neills, and it will premiere this fall. And here's the deadline report about the show. Uh, the O'Neills is about a family in the aftermath of a son coming out. And it's been uh, the internal ABC favorite. Its fate was put into question when religion, 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 and the conservatives, 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 uh, started a campaign against the project after the involvement of the outspoken gay activist, Mr. Savage. Uh, the comedy was originally going to be based on his life growing up, but that changed during the development of the pilot. Uh, with the story evolving in a different direction. Uh, the Anneals make the return of Raising Hope's Martha Plimpton uh, with another comedy role. Will you be tuning in? Yes, I will, actually. Um, a lot of people say there's not uh, a lot of gay characters on the TV. Unfortunately, um, you know, there's been a lot of gay characters in the past, and... Um, I'm not being a fond of a lot of the characters, mainly because uh, there's been like a caricature of, you know, the gay people, this simpering, limp-wristed, um, lisping little queens. Well, not all of us are like that. And all, a lot are. I don't care, you know, and I'm not saying, you know, it's wrong to be a feminine, but uh, what I'm saying is it's wrong to portray every gay person as an effeminate male. Not everybody is effeminate. And there are a lot of effeminate males out there, and a lot of them are loved. There are a lot of masculine males out there, and a lot of them are loved. There are a lot of intellectual males out there, and a lot of them are loved. There's a lot of stupid males out there, and a lot of them are loved. There's not just one type of gay male or homosexual male. In fact, I don't I say I never say I'm a homosexual male. I say I'm a male who happens to be homosexual. So there, I have spoken. Here's a nice one. A Catholic priest in Ireland has said he has plans to ignore the wishes of his church and vote for same-sex marriage in the upcoming referendum. Uh, the Republic of Ireland is set to vote very soon, May 22nd, uh, on a proposal to introduce uh, civil same-sex marriage. The powerful Catholic lobbying groups are quietly channeling support into the No campaign. In other words, they're putting lots and lots of funds and lots and lots of money into hate. Once again, a religious organization that is supposed to have the compassion of Christ is shoveling money into hatred. I, this to me is a total oxymoron. If you are a Christian organization, you do not have the right to actually fund hate groups. Remember, the KKK was originally, and still originally is, a Christian group. But yet, the hatred that comes from their mouths. And the KKK, when that's founded, once again, a Christian group, has been responsible in some parts, apparently, uh, for over like 40,000 lynchings and hangings and murders and setting people on fire in the name of Christianity. So if you're saying that, you know, you are a Christian group and you believe in God, these are Christian groups too. We don't want Christian groups that are extremists. Extremists are worse than ISIS. ISIS is also an extremist group. You cannot put it all down to one religion. It's just, just, it's just, you cannot do it. Hatred is not a Christian thing. Hatred is not a Muslim thing. All of a told is hatred is not God's love, Allah's love. Anybody's love. 
you cannot blame your hatred on a religion. Simple as that. I think it's time for music. Have a little bit of Cullen Blue. I haven't played him for a while. And it's called Rex Tremende. I'm James D. And you listen to Gay Detroit Radio, which is every Friday at 9 p.m. on www.radio-op.com. Don't forget also, you can go to us 24-7 on gaydetroitradio.com uh, and you can listen to lots of shows, lots of songs up there, past shows as well. If you want to contact us, it's on gaydetroitradio at gmail.com. Also on Facebook on Gay Detroit Radio. Everything is Gay Detroit Radio. Also, you can get us on Twitter too, Gay Detroit Radio. Isn't that just wonderful? I'm James D. And once again, it's Gay Detroit Radio. Rex is what you title a king Man full of generosity Power his eyes, strengthen his voice, strengthen his eyes. For his excellency When he appears in virtual In front of your eyes With all of his might With all of his strife You'll see at the beauty within Every smile, every laugh, every grin Deep in your souls Bathing in hope Bathing in love and trust in our Yes, we're just about now um, hitting the last section of the show. What a god, it goes so fast. Well, finally, in Laramie, uh, they're actually now uh, 17 years after Matthew Shepard's murder, Laramie passes the LGBT protections. As you know, that a town where Matthew Shep- Shepard became a victim of the deadly anti gay hate crime in 1998, uh, Laramie. Uh, Wyoming has now become the first municipality in the state to adopt LGBT inclusive anti-discrimination laws. So this is really good. The Laramie City Council passed the ordinance uh, this week by a vote of 72. The Associated Press reports it bans discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender identity in employment housing and public accommodations and it sets up a process for a filming dis- excuse me for filing discrimination complaints 
uh, which the city will then investigate. The ordinance will go into effect by the end of this month. So I guess it's um, vodka time because I can't speak. (laughs) <laughs> Dear, what can I say? Here's something as well. Now, before his death in uh, 2011, Rudolf Brazda uh, recalled his time as a prisoner at the Nazi death camp of Buchenwald Brazda. Uh, excuse me, Buchenwald, sorry, oh, Buchenwald. Uh, Brazda, 97, at the time at the 2010 interview, um, spoke with Jag, a French gay news source, and uh, the German-born Brazda settled in France after Broschwald uh, was liberated by the Allies. His testimony was previously um, the subject of the itinerary of a Pink Triangle book uh, by Jean-Luc Schwab. Um, it's about... Uh, the Gay Holocaust Survivor, and it's a video that's going to be shown on v, uh, VE. A lot of people don't remember or choose to forget that the Pink Triangle was actually invented by the SS Nazis, along with the Star of They didn't invent the Star of David, but that was also the Star of David for Juden. And the Pink Triangle was for the gay um, Holocaust um, victims. So the Pink Triangle is actually um, was really a death sentence in the world of the World War Two era. So the Pink Triangle is often worn with pride and defiance, and has been for many many years uh, because of the Holocaust. Um, a lot of people do forget that you know they say now it's you know the the victims are now the christians the christians let's say let's say not just the christians but a lot of religious organizations have been persecuting homosexuality not just for decades but for centuries it has to stop we're not saying that we we don't want to be victims anymore we just want equal rights we want to marry we want to be regarded as equals. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. But it's time for me to start going. Um, don't forget, we're going to be here every Friday at 9 p.m. with good old Radio OP dash. Oh, sorry. Oh, good God. Do you have the nose fix now? Teeth won't work. It's www.radio-op.com. That's every Friday, 9 p.m. Don't forget that gays are now going to be blamed for all the tsunamis, the gay California drought, uh, the gay earthquakes, and don't forget also Michigan had a little earthquake um, this week as well. I think three deck chairs fell over. So that's the gay's fault as well. So listen, Jim, and I'm sorry, but you know what? You're just going to have to deal with it now. Simple as that. Anyway, got to go. Lynn Gemma, thank you for listening. I'm James D, and I will see you at the same gay time, same gay place. www.radio.op.com See you next week. Bye. <laughs>